All right, all right, all right. Uh, by request and because I'm kind of a bit bored of doing crypto charts and there is so many gains to be had out there in gold, silver, copper resources that I'm going to do a video on precious metals and the like and commodities. So uh, hope you like it. Hope you're interested in it. This is where I'm putting all my money and my profits from crypto, especially from my Bitcoin miners. Anyway, let's get into it. So yeah, please like and subscribe the video and do all that jazz so I can get my 1000 subscribers and just say, woo, I'm a 100,000 subscriber channel. Ah. Anyway, now it does open a few doors because then I can um, do a few more things start to monetize a little bit which will help out with all the effort I have put in so far because I know that it takes a lot of time and I know that um, people think that it might be easy to run a YouTube channel but it's actually uh, quite time consuming so yeah it'd be good to be able to monetize a little bit and at least maybe be profit neutral <laughs> in in time versus uh, you know a little bit of ad money but anyway I won't go deep into that uh, we're on the gold chart and we're on the weekly and I want to say that anyone that does follow gold and knows what had happened, it's been quite a boring time since August. And uh, boring because it's a retracement and it's not like crypto this market, it's not, um, it's not quick. So we've had a lot of weeks, uh, we're in March now and we've finally probably seen a bottom. Um, because if you if you kind of go back there, you know, this is where the bull run started. I wish I had been in a little bit earlier, but I kind of missed that boat. Anyway, bull run started, COVID happened, um, peaked up there, probably overshot where it needed to be. It probably should have just slowly ran to 1800 and then went sideways for a bit and then kicked on out of there. But anyway, it overshot um, and... It's kind of made a series of lower lows, and I think that's the bottom now. I think a close above 1770 will mean we are safe to say that that's a bottom, and then obviously a new higher low and a higher high will, will be that reversal, and then definitely once we're above this kind of 1960 mark, and we're closing a weekly candle above there, we'll probably see some large movements in the price action on gold. Now silver on the other hand, we have a very short amount of time to be making a decision because we've, we're actually, we're not in a downtrend, you know, we're in an uptrend. Um, you know, we, we kind of had a quick correction and then we've had higher lows for a couple of weeks now. It's just that there seems to be some pressure you know some tightening of a spring so i think silver is going to break out before gold in a big way uh, we've got one two weeks before it has to decide on whether it wants to go break to the upside from this little triangle from the pink line to the yellow line or whether it wants to kind of go sideways and and scare everyone now my my money's on within the next two or three weeks it's going to fire on to the upside and i think it is going to once it breaks breaks this 30 well basically a 30 and a half cents on the weekly if it closes the week above 30 and a half cents this thing's going to fire onto its all-time high it's probably going to pull back to this yellow line and then it's going to fire on and who knows where the thing could go um, if you look at this yellow line here you know is it 160 is it 190 is it 224 you know, who knows um, where it is at. My money is on 170 uh, in the next kind of, you know, a, as a, a consolidated price in the next five to seven years. But um, it could definitely spike up to these levels and then kind of pull, pull its way back down and work its way through this kind of megaphone pattern. Anyway, I... I'm going to talk about things that I'm invested in. Uh, copper, yeah, copper's another one. Um, I just want to look at copper quickly and because it's going to lead into why I'm investing in copper miners. Uh, big arc has happened since 2012. Big arc, double dip, double tap. We're at the top of the arc and we're probably going to pull back somewhere here at some time or we'll have a larger consolidation while silver and gold fire on out. 
And then once gold and silver are fired out, copper's probably going to move up to five and then six, six dollars, which may mean nothing. It's not about investing in the copper. It's about investing in the miners that um, are selling a lot of copper. Anyway, this leads on to GDIG. Uh, I was kind of speculating on a basket of gold miners and and kind of mixed miners, precious metal miners, um, about six or seven of them. And I kind of got in a little bit early in the retracement, I guess, and things were going down and I was doubling down. And I was trying to keep everything, you know, above 10% in, you know, in, in the negative, um, only because I know that it's all upside later. But I kind of got a bit annoyed with trying to follow everything and trying to find the bottom of everything. Which one do I put money in at which time? And then I found this particular uh, Vanek Vectors uh, GDIG and it had all of the miners that I was speculating on. Plus it had like Rio Tinto or BHP, which, you know, I would like to have some skin in the game in those companies. It's just that, you know, I don't want to just have like 200 or $500 worth of those sort of companies in, in my trading 2 and 2 account. So I just thought, well, the best way to gain exposure to the entire precious metals, iron ore, um, gold, copper, silver, you know, uh, rare earths, maybe a bit of uranium, potash, whatever it is, whatever's cool. Uh, it seems like this is the global commodities um, or global mining of commodities uh, ETF. So it's kind of like a safe haven in a way. Uh, it's not so volatile because if gold goes up uh, and silver doesn't, it's got, it's safe. You know, if it's silver goes up and gold doesn't, it's a bit safe. You know, if if iron ore and copper goes up and gold and silver don't, it's kind of going to do well as well. So um, it's a fairly balanced portfolio. So it's kind of like my, if I've got nothing else better to put my money into, I'm going to put my money into that. So I'll leave that there. Like I say, 150 of the best mining companies in the world. So uh, very good one to hold um, as, you know, a core position in your portfolio. Hoxchild Mining, uh, kind of silver gold play. Uh, once again, I am kind of maybe got in, not, not early, but I've been holding that for a while. And, you know, there's that temptation to kind of get out because you're just sick of waiting. But you can see there's a an angle it wants to break. Once it breaks it, it's going to fire onto the upside. It's probably going to hit this 440 mark. So there's straight away a two bagger there for the for, you know for any investment you do right now um, within you know whenever silver breaks out. Kefi Gold and Copper. I've got a fairly decent position in them as well. Um, they've they've done a reversal from from their downtrend, so they're not. You know, they're officially broken out. It's just that they're in this consolidation period where they're still a exploration company that is a near-term producer. Um, they have a gold mine in Ethiopia and they've got a copper gold exploration project in Saudi Arabia, which could be turn out to be something massive. Um, but we're just kind of waiting on... Waiting on information on that one right now, but definitely within uh, a couple of years, they are going to be turning a profit uh, in gold, um, 140,000 ounces a year. Or anyway, they've got they've got ounces of gold in the ground that will be produced by 2022, which um, is why I'm speculating on it, um, and I believe the market will speculate on it too, and. If anyone knows me and my channel, I love playing these breakouts, you know, like this thing was 161 pence at one point in the last gold bull run or the Topeka, the last gold bull run. So people were willing to speculate when they had barely a piece of land then. And then right now you can buy it while they've got those pieces of land that are drilled out and, um, you know, have feasible studies on them that say there's stuff to be mined and, and the mines are about to happen. And you can buy it now for one pound and a bit or two pounds, sorry, two pounds flat. Uh, yeah, that's a good time to enter, you know, even if it drops a bit, you know, like if that's where we're heading long term, you know, five, five years time, six years time, then that's a, that's a good upside, right? You know, and then even then, 
if you look at six pen, six pence, ten pence, um, you've got a easy five bagger there if you don't want to hold on for the long run. Sentiment, uh, don't know a lot about them. Uh, gold, gold, probably a bit of silver. Pay a good dividend. Um, sentiment play, pay a good dividend. Uh, they are a FTSE two hundred and fifty company. You know, once again, it's just a good part of my safer core portfolio. Um, and I don't want to. Ha- I, I, I don't want to have too much in U.S. stocks. I don't. I think it's good to have some Europe, U, U.K. European stocks, some U.S. stocks, some Australian stocks in these markets because. You know, the the American dollar's going down, the Australian dollar's going up, the Canadian dollar's going up, you know, the euro is probably going to be a bit flat. So uh, it's good to have a, a spread of uh, stocks in different currencies. So that's why I have a little bit of sentiment um, for the dividend as well. Thor mining, I've got a tiny position because I'm waiting for a breakout. So I buy breakouts, I buy into things that I think will have a breakout um, before they have a breakout so that it kind of keeps my head in the game. Um, sometimes I get annoyed and sell out of them if they go too deep into a correction. Um, but yeah, Thor mining has a really uh, mixed portfolio of like rare earths, copper, gold, um, and I think maybe some minerals or tungsten or something. Uh, but anyway, it's got a good diversified portfolio of assets. It just isn't actually mining any of them yet, but I believe it has a copper asset that is very easy to extract, like by pumping acid through the ground or water through the ground and then collecting a solution of copper which sounds really cool and interesting and fun uh, in the fact that they don't have to blow up the earth uh, to get the copper out and copper's going up in price. So holding on to that one could see a massive breakout. And once again, you know, from a, a pound now or under a pound and it has been 493 pounds, we could see something big happening there. Um, these things, when they have lost all this amount of steam, the angle of sent out of there you know it could be very quickly up to kind of these levels nine 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 pence blue jay mining uh mineral sands random kind of other commodities not not, not, nothing in the gold and silver space uh but uh once again like i'm into it because they're in like norway or something like that you know it's it's a different jurisdiction they seem to have I have that zone locked up, so I'm into it. And the chart looks good, you know, like it's kind of pulled back a little bit. And I think we're heading on out to this all time high of 27 pence. So, once again, a three bagger if that all happens. Kodo Minerals, uh, one, another breakout that I've been holding and playing, and it has just broken out. Luckily, I think if th- this would be my hottest tip if you can be trading in the, the London stock market. Uh, if this thing makes a pullback to this pink line, you know, around the 10 or 12 pence mark, I would be loading my bag because um, it's going to fire out and it's probably going to hit this 56 pence mark at some point and um, consolidate again. So right now you've got a kind of easy easy five bagger uh lithium play it's it's like battery metals you know and uh i i'm saying that because the london stock market is hungry for lithium play so premier african minerals was playing this breakout knew nothing about them until they broke out then i did a bit of research and they have a large um exploration license just been awarded to them like an exclusive exploration license been awarded to them in uh, Zimbabwe for some good lithium, good grade lithium, and some tantalum, which is uh, another metal which is rare enough and used in enough things like very hard metal. So once again, a couple of hundred percent on this breakout. Probably could see it consolidate for a bit longer and head up to this seven pence line, uh, which would be really cool because. Uh, you know, this whole playing the breakouts thing from these descending 10-year bear market kind of stocks, super duper cool. You know, once again, 
they break out, take your profits. You know, I mean, take your profits of your buy-in, ride them, ride them throughout the bull market in commodities. Great Land Gold. I look had seen this one and turned away from it because I'm like it's already broken out. But then the more I looked at the chart, I was like, okay, so it's done its cup, did a little bit of a handle. And now then it fired out of there with gold. Now it's making a pullback. So it's, it was kind of an attractive entry point for me um, in the sense that I think this thing could run. And then I did a little bit more research about it. And the new CEO is actually the CEO of one of my all-time favorite charts ever, which is called North Star Mining. And I'm going to go over here to metals and go to North Star because, uh, where are they? They could be one of these guys. And these are the ones you want to get into, right? Uh, you know, so consolidation, consolidation, exploration phase, big dip, you know, fear, everyone's thrown in the towel. Oh, wait, we probably got some results or uh, it comes back up, right? So a bit of a struggle there and then bang. You know, so since 2010, this particular company has gone superbly. Um, you know, so if you think about, let's say, this is where it's at in compared to the Great Lynn Gold story, 56X. Um, and I'm not saying that because the CEO of a company that did this uh, and moves over to a junior company that's uh, into gold or whatever is going to do the same thing but what they do have um, and let's find that chart again and uh, no, sorry great land gold um, what they do have is a very large asset uh, of gold open pitable gold next to a little mine called Telfer which I know personally has been one of Australia's best producing gold mines for a very long time so they're using the Telfer mill um, so they don't have to spend a lot of money on getting getting it out of the ground and processing it and it's all there and if it's the same dirt and same earth as um, Telfer and I know because I've actually knocked the uh, lifters out of the mill at Telfer and they are the biggest mills I've worked on uh, in all the mills I've been to and there's two of them and so it can produce a lot of gold. So if they are working that mill to its full potential, then um, Greatland Gold is going to do very well. And I believe they are doing the initial cuts into build the ramp and get down to where the gold is to start the open pit. So um, very exciting time for a little company called Greatland Gold. And I think uh, if we look at their market cap just under a bill, yeah, so good time to be in a near-term producer, you know, 500 to a, mil a billion market cap. Like this thing could go could go big um, once, you know, once the profitability comes in. So that's Great Land Gold. Um, Mag Silver. Oh, wow. Uh, super bullish on this one. They have so many ounces of silver in the ground and they are a very, very near-term near -term producer, as in they are producing right now. They're putting their ore um, through a mill two days a week, generating about, uh, sorry, two days a month, generating about five million a month um, from silver at these prices. Now, once they go into full production in their plant, because um, they're borrowing a plant of Fresneo, which is their partner. Um, they are going to be so cash heavy, uh, it's not funny, and they'll start paying a dividend, which is super cool. Now, I kind of got sucked into them around these levels, 19 to 20, and was super bullish on them. I still super bullish on them, and I wish I had not have bought as much as I did uh, back then because now I can get it for a little bit cheaper because silver's gone sideways and people get bored and sell out um, it's consolidated down here which I had predicted in those videos and it's kind of touching its 50-day moving average there so I knew this would happen but I was too impatient and that that happens right but I've still got skin in the game and I'm happy I'm only a little bit down in a cost basis um, so at some point I'm probably going to pull the trigger and maybe sell out all of my Argo blockchain or something and just buy the rest of it in MagSilver. But I'm just waiting for the right 
right opportunity if Bitcoin pumps a bit and then the silver doesn't, maybe I'll do the trade then. Gold minerals, um, near-term producer or just recently started to be a producer. So they're broken out a while ago, had a good channel there, kind of letting us know where it wants to be. It wants to be up at the dollar thirty range, but because of silver, you know, this happened on that silver spike or the silver um, squeeze thing, I think, maybe not. Maybe the silver squeeze thing was here. Anyway, um, that's where it wants to be. Uh, it's just bounced off this channel. It's going to head up here in the dollar sixty range very soon, and I'll probably scale out of that position by half or or a third, and put it into something more solid. You know, because that's my plan with the more junior things is to probably really I want to own as much mag as I can, and other things like this sandstorm. So sandstorm is another great thing to be buying right now uh i believe this thing is below its net asset value so of all the royalties and streams that it has it and the share price and market cap is below what the net asset value is so very very good considering that gold is slightly correcting you know so gold's been reversed for two weeks this thing's reversed for three weeks I am so lucky to have just got in around the $6 mark, which is super cool. So I'm in the green and it's only going to go up, you know, so the next move here is probably up to 14. So that's, that's a 2x and a solid streamer produce um, streaming royalty company. So they don't do the mining, they just have a percentage of the mine profits or gold or get the gold cheaper to sell it at a higher price. Uh, based on investments they make in early stage exploration. So that's what these guys do. Uh, Sierra Metals don't have any skin in the game. Oh, no, I do. Sorry, Sierra Metals are more like zinc, copper. They've got a nice mixed bag of producing assets. So had a really good run, like the chart. Um, if they can do this move again, uh, we are looking at being somewhere up around the 3x very quickly, um, you know, within months or, you know, at least six months or a couple of quarters anyway. Gatto, silver, recently IPO'd high-grade silver mine uh, in Mexico. Had a really good run, letting us know where they want to be. They want to be up in the 23, 25 range. They pulled back here. So would be a good entry point if you aren't in um, anywhere around 13. Uh, I'm kind of down here, which is pretty cool, maybe 9 or 10. Uh, small bag once again if it really takes a run I might uh, consolidate that into mag silver which I know is going to be a super duper great asset LTS minerals this one I'm keeping an eye on um, another streaming royalty company but more in the commodities in general like copper coal iron ore uh, potash which is like fertilizer like it's a big money and apparently um, so yeah, another one I'm looking at has had a good run since March. I think that they're once they break out of their all-time highs, they're going to fire on out of there. And uh, as long as they keep on producing money, and that year on year they're making more profit. So you know these royalty streaming companies are really good. You know lower risk opportunities. Strategic Minerals, I own none of it, but I'm keeping an eye on it for breakout. Uh, so you can see this triangle pattern. I reckon this. Point thirty four pence was a really great low risk entry, um, so I might kind of wait to see if it goes up and then pulls back again, and get it around there and then bang, see what happens when it fires and out of there. But once again, lithium, minerals in the ground, random mixed bag of stuff. Uh, Silver ball resources. Once again, I am watching for a breakout, uh, but it hasn't happened yet, so. Could happen soon and I'll see what happens. But I'd been playing this one and I kind of won on another few breakouts. So kind of if, if, if things aren't happening quickly, I kind of get out of the game. And then the rest of these are the ones, like I was saying, coal mining, uh, Northern Dynasty Minerals, uh, Yamada Gold, Pan American Silver, First Majestic Silver, Heckler Mining, Fortuna Silver Mines, um, 
rare element resources, I am gold, Kinross gold, wheat and press specials, turquoise resources, Equinox gold, they're all companies that are in that GDIG. So uh, like I say, I was getting sick of kind of trying to follow and have a small position or trying to figure out my positioning in each of those. So I went and all, sold them all and went to the GDIG. Um, and that way I can just play the whole bunch of them with one stock, which is great. That's that. It's a super long video. Um, but yeah, gold, copper, silver, commodities, uh, if you're interested in it. I know this video won't get many likes, but uh, hey, the people that are thinking about these things are going to be able to take their profits and multiply them at the end of the run. Bye now.